Shalom. First and foremost, as always, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kodash. Double honors to the Apostle and Elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Uh, this video I will not take up much of your time. Just want to be very quick and to the point, and just want to say a few words on, you know, the new flavor of the week that has come out with pretty much IUIC. Uh, if you're in the know, you would have seen the clip that certain brothers, elders and apostles of Great Millstone have done the clip that Bishop Nathaniel and the IUIC is now teaching that we are in the New Covenant. Also, Captain Tazariak, also of the ISUPK, are also teaching that we are in the New Covenant. And we are not in the New Covenant at all, right? We are in, we are in grace right now. We have a chance to get ourselves correct, to get ourselves right. But we are not in the new covenant at all right and what i'm going to name this title of this lesson lord's willing is ask questions because people have to stop listening just straight up listening to what members of the i just in general just stop listening to what men say and actually go in the scriptures like yahush i said search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life so instead of just okay they come out with this doctrine now, right? Which is, okay, we're in the new covenant. Well, ask the question, how are we in the new covenant, right? Right, what does the new covenant entail? What does the new covenant come with? How are we in the new covenant? When did this begin? You see, you can't just sit there and take what men are saying saying for face value and then it's like, oh, okay, well, uh, we're in the new covenant. Oh, we're in the new covenant. We're in the new covenant. No, it's, that's not how it works. Even when I first came to truth, when I heard all these precepts that these men were bringing out and I saw the Bible in the head, it's not to sit there and say I didn't believe it, but I still want to see it with my own very eyes. And you could say that's a lack of faith, but I want to see and read with my own eyes when I heard Revelation 13 and 9 and 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go. And I had to open up my book and read it and say, oh, wow, damn, it really says that. <laughs> Because I want to make sure that what men were saying was 100% correct. And you have to search the scriptures as well. You have to do your due diligence to make sure. Because you, when you understand this truth, you understand that there are going to be true teachers of the Lord. And there are going to be false teachers of the Lord. And you want to make sure that you're following the correct teacher. Because you want to be saved, don't you? And salvation only comes through one way. It's following the correct teaching. If you follow the false teaching, it's going to lead to destruction. We've seen examples that examples of that in the scriptures. So if you want, excuse me, to get salvation, you have to follow the proper doctrine and get, excuse me, I apologize, right? Follow the proper doctrine and get the proper understanding. And again, we are not in the new covenant. I'll even say it, Lord's willing, the Lord covers this video. Even when it comes to things, again, like the mark of the beast, Revelation 13, verses 16 to the end. When IUIC and them say that what? The mark of the beast is sin. You have to question these things and ask, right? Nobody's saying that you have to get disrespectful, but you have to question, ask, how is the mark of the beast sin? How does that tie into when it says in the 17th verse, and no man shall buy or sell save he that had the mark? How does sin tie into buying and selling? <laughs> What about these Greek words that I've heard as well that men from GMS and those that follow the like doctrine have brought out these three Greek words all the time that go into karagma, karox, and grapho? What about these words? Is there any information in these words? Can there be any uh, uh, extra edification that we could get out of these words and things like that? Don't just take it off face value. Ask these questions. Again, if the mark of the beast is sin, how is the mark of the beast sin? How does that tie into buying and selling? These are valid questions that you should ask. So that way you get the understanding and you're not just saying the mark of the beast is sin. It's the same thing like, think of it like a school setting, right? You're in school. Once the teacher has taught you the curriculum, right? They don't just sit there and say, okay, they've got it. Sometimes the teachers will question you and see if you really know what you have been taught and can you explain it? You may not have to reference it from the book word for word, but they will ask you to see if you're able to explain it in your own words to see, okay, they got it. They are able to explain it in their own words. It may not be referenced from the book word for word, but they're able to 
explain it in their own words so I see that they got it. That's the purpose of asking questions, which let me get this precept. Uh, this is Sirach or Ecclesiasticus chapter 22 and verse 19. He that pricketh the eye will make tears to fall, and he that pricketh the heart will make it to show her knowledge. So the same way when you, let's just say, take a needle or you take a finger and you poke someone in the eye, tears are going to fall out. So that's the same thing that you do with questions. When you ask someone questions, it, it, it forces uh, information, more edification to come out. Like I said, using the example, if we're in the new covenant, when was the new covenant uh, instituted? Who instituted the new covenant? When did this happen? Right. And uh, where where are the blessings of the new covenant? Because we're supposed to get the, you know, the 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 promises as well. Where are these things? You're just listening to these men. You listen, you watch the video where Bishop Nathaniel was saying, stop listening to these Hebrews who are saying we're not in the new uh, a new covenant. But you have to question this man. Hey, uh, Bishop, uh, when was this new covenant instituted? Because when we go into the scriptures, we can see like. When the uh, if you go into Exodus the twenty fourth chapter, if I'm not mistaken, that's when the first covenant was instituted. We have a record of that. If the new covenant was instituted, show us in the scriptures where the new covenant began. And if that's true, then how come? Because the new covenant isn't just for a set group of Israelites. The new covenant is for the elect and the two thirds that come back. So why isn't all of our people partaking in the new covenant? Why are we still going out there teaching? These are questions that you have to ask. And these will what? Prick the mind. Let me go back to uh, Sirach 5 and 15. Right? This is Sirach chapter 5 and verse 15. It says, be not ignorant. Be not ignorant of anything in a great or small matter. Right? So you can't be ignorant. Ignorant means to not know. You have to know and understand. If we're in the new covenant, what does the new covenant bring? When did the new covenant start? The mark of the beast. When did the mark of the beast, uh, uh, how does, again, buying and selling tie into the mark of the beast? These are questions that you have to ask. And to give another example as well, this is Acts chapter 17. I'll start from verse 10. The point is in verse 11, but it says, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. There were th these, excuse me, were more noble than those of in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So when Paul and Silas were teaching them, yes, they took in, like it says, with readiness of mind. Let's get into. Uh, some definitions here. <laughs> right? So it says zeal, spirit, eagerness. So they were eager to learn, and that's good. But it says what? They searched the scriptures to see whether those things were true. Okay, I believe it's, is it searched? Right. It says to examine or judge, investigate. <laughs> Examine, uh, scrutinize, right? Interrogate. So you want to ask questions. You want to really get into it and see, are these men actually teaching the truth? We can't go back to the way we were in the churches where we just listened to a pastor and whatever he said, that's how it goes. This is why you have confusion in those, in those churches where people believe in hell. People believe in uh, Satan is uh, uh, doing his own thing. When we can go into precepts to show you that there is no hell, that Satan is not doing his own thing. Satan is controlled by the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father is the one that brings good and evil. People on the earth think that God is, all, is only all good and Satan is the one doing evil. But we have the understanding because what? We went into the scriptures. We searched it. We examined. Right? We scrutinized like, okay, all right, let's, let's really see if this is it. We went into different words and things like that, went into definitions. We studied to show ourselves approved and things like that to make sure that this is really correct. You have to do the same thing when these men are coming out saying 
these outlandish things such as the mark of the beast's sin and that we're in the new covenant? Ask these questions. And I'm pretty sure, you know, these are just basic questions that I just came up with as I was meditating, but I'm pretty sure there's even more questions. And I'll say it again. If the mark of the beast is sin, how does that tie into buying and selling? If we're in the new covenant, when did the new covenant begin? Who instituted the new covenant? When was the new covenant instituted? And why is it that we see that our people are still suffering? And why are we still teaching? Because according to the scriptures, like if I'm not mistaken, Jeremiah 31, we shall not teach anymore. When was the stony heart taken away and the heart of flesh given unto us? Where is the immortality? Where is the change? These things come with the new covenant. These are the questions that you have to ask. And this is what the men of Berea were doing. Yes, they were ready. Yes, they were eager. But they also scrutinized, checked to make sure that this was true because they cared about their salvation. They cared about the truth and not just listening to someone. But I'll end it there. Like I said, don't want to make it too long. Just want to make this very short and straight to the point. Pray that this video was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachak, Kodash, Shalom.